Hello, I'm Thomas, the Accidental DM, and what I have for you today is a grimoire of terror that comes out from Odephius as part of their Octum Cthulhu series. It's a series of uh, kind of creatures to use, as well as some uh, adventure ideas as we kind of go into the kind of the Halloween season. So let's kind of see what they've given us and have a look at that and see if that might be something that you might be interested in using in your Octum, Octum Cthulhu game or perhaps even export it over to something else. But let's just kind of dive right in. So as we're kind of looking here, um, the kind of a standard cover that they have for a lot of things, but let's, so let's just jump right into their Halloween horror table of contents. Um, so we have then uh, Sekuferu, the Forgotten Pharaoh, uh, the Oslo Pack, uh, J uh, Jacques Leturn, uh, Barges, the Blood Harlequin, and then we have some adventure seeds. So we're getting five creatures here as well as a series of adventure seeds um, that are most of them, some of them are connected then to the creatures in here, but some of them are just kind of more Halloween kind of themed things. Uh, so starting off specifically with Sekfer, uh, Sekferu, the Forgotten Pharaoh, um, as I was looking at this a little bit earlier, this is probably the... Um, uh, most kind of powerful in terms, especially then, of some of the special rules that are associated with that. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the uh, the flavor text that it gives us. Uh, discovered by members of the Deutsch Orient uh, Gerstlock in 1930, the tomb of Sekifru was old even by ancient Egyptian standards. The tomb was simple. No frescoes adorned the walls, no gold statues, no material wealth of any kind to accompany the pharaoh on his journey to the afterlife. The sarcophagus was also empty, instead containing canopic jars used to store the viscera of the ruler of the af of the afterlife. Uh, normally, there were four of these holding the intestines, the stomach, the lungs, and the liver. The fifth contained a desiccated heart. Normally, this would have been left within the body since it contained the soul. So definitely then having it removed... <laughs> You could tell there is some uh, uh, some mythos elements that are happening in there. Uh, a sandstorm appears out of nowhere when the jars were removed, and only a handful of survivors. All right, so it's more of that good old flavor text. A powerful and wonderful, a powerful sorcerer and worshiper of Yog Sothoth. Uh, he is trapped in a bodiless state and seeks to return to the land of the living. To do so, he must find all of his canopic jars, uh, including the one containing his heart. To maintain a physical presence, he must kill, taking the organs of his victims and placing them in his rotted innards. Okay. Very much right off the bat, this is kind of giving me those uh, uh, the mummy vibes, the original movie, The Mummy, uh, with Brent, uh, Brandon Fraser in it. That's just kind of what I got, uh, you know. And it's very pulpy, you know, which is what uh, Octum Cthulhu is kind of all about in terms of that. Uh, kind of just skipping over a little bit to uh, uh, the stats for himself, he is listed then as a nemesis NPC, so that means definitely going to be one of those more uh, hardy ones. And as I said, I think this is probably uh, the most difficult of the bunch that is are in here um so we have then some of his abilities as bronze etc that's there uh he does have a 12 stress so he's going to be kind of difficult to get um his attacks he has a semi-substantial clause so he's got a kind of a hand physical attack fearful aura so he has a mental attack so he's got both a physical and a mental attack that are going with it um and let's take a look at some of his um uh, uh, special powers uh, so we have ethereal evisceration if uh, Sekiferu, that is definitely one that's going to be difficult to speak, uh, successfully hits a victim and spends six threat, he plunges a claw into the victim's torso and attempts to rip out one of their organs in a shower of blood. Such a traumatic act inflicts an additional four stress and is nearly always fatal to the victim. Uh, Sekiferu immediately heals four stress uh, on a single injury. So definitely it's it's powerful because it does have require six threat. You have to have succeeded on your attack. Then then spend, then spend six threat, and then you're able to get it. Um, but yeah, it's going to do a heck of a lot of power, and it's kind of one of those I take from you and give it to myself type of things. We then also have Sands of Time. Uh, by spending two threat, uh, it turns into a cloud of red sand, allowing him to uh, seep through cracks or keyholes. He cannot uh, make attacks or cast spells. Okay, so it's a way for him to kind of quickly kind of maneuver out of uh, out of situations, uh, to kind of get into closed buildings, closed locked rooms, etc. Get that that uh, sand going through the the keyhole type of look that are going on there. Um, and then we have the uh, fact that um, uh, uses will to cast spells and knows all spells and rituals of Yog Sothoth. Okay, so that is a uh, uh, definitely then uh, kind of in his wheelhouse. Uh, we do have this kind of top secret thing here as well. Uh, possession of one of Sekiferu's jars grants a plus two power to the caster. 
All right, so you do have a reason to have one of those jars. As we know, he's looking for those jars, so it's not going to be the uh, necessarily the best thing for you, but heck, uh, gives you a little boost in your in your powers. Uh, fast recovery, two special ability, but once you, Second Hefru, is aware of both the owner and their location. So it definitely kind of kind of come after you, this very powerful wizard sorcerer of Yogg-Sothoth. Um, probably not one you want to kind of deal with uh, when you're by yourself, that's for sure. Okay, uh, definitely here then, we've got a kind of a traditional werewolf. Wolf. Excellent. I mean, we're talking again, uh, kind of Halloween type of stuff. The werewolf would be a perfect addition to that. So the Oslo pack. So three generations of the Andresen family live within a large townhouse a short distance from the notorious Victoria Terrasse, the headquarters of the SS and Gestapo at Oslo. The patriarch of the family, or Alpha in this case, is Ingvar Andreasen, a solid mountain of a man. He is soft-spoken and very light. So we've got a whole family then of uh, werewolves, uh, Again, one is bad enough. You put them in packs, and it's probably going to get even worse. The family appears human and holds down regular jobs. They have a dark secret. secret they're all lycanthropes, uh, able to assume the form of a wolf while still retaining their intelligence and reason. The Andreasen's pack it aren't just found in Oslo. They have cousins in Tro uh, Tronso who also share the same bloodline and abilities. Uh, the largest werewolf there, Ingvar's first son, Henrik, uh, ch chafes at Ingvar's leadership and thinks his pack should be independent of Oslo's good. Uh, interesting. Okay, so we've got um, we've got this large pack then, um, kind of in two different branches. They're kind of a little bit at war with what, and I wouldn't say at war necessarily, but there's definitely going to be some uh, clench, uh, clashes between the two, which might be something then um, that uh, Section M can utilize in uh, in uh, kind of taking out then uh, the the Dark Sun, etc. So you've got these two different factions going on. But once again, werewolves are werewolves. They're going to be <laughs> they're going to be tough to beat. Uh, these are listed then as trooper NPCs. Um, and as we can see, we've got some things we'd expect for a werewolf. Uh, kind of high agility here. Um, their uh, coordination is a nine. Their broad is an eleven. Oof, very strong, very strong. All right, uh, stress of 12, just as we saw with our Pharaoh Sorcerer earlier. Uh, some of our special rules directly with them. They have grasping in wolf form. After a successful attack, spend one thread to add the snare effect to the attack. While it has a target and snare, the world cannot make melee strikes against other targets, but reduces the difficulty of attacks versus the ensnare target by one. It's a little bit of trade-off, kind of holding on to them. Uh, we also have Keen Sense. Uh, this creature reduces the difficulty of all skill tests relating to smell by two. That makes sense. Uh, pack Hunter. All right. Uh, a little bit of a feed over, I guess, from some of the pack tactics that we see in, in Dungeons and & Dragons. Um, and so the Andreas and werewolves gain moral sub morale equal to the number of werewolves present in the scene to a maximum of five. Uh, morale in addition where when attacking a creature that has already been attacked by one or more werewolves that round the Andreas may reroll a single d20 so that's a nice little thing uh, shape shapeshifter uh, by spending one momentum or by using a major action and Andreas and pack member can switch between human and wolf forms and then in wolf form the wolf form has the Andreas and werewolves resemble an unusually large uh, humanoid wolf of the gray wolf family and then wolves how werewolves can make a mental attack listed above so you've got again some very powerful physical attributes i mean you've got that broad 11 but then you do have this uh, howling which will also then cause some mental stress as well uh definitely once again another uh pretty tough uh, adversary to have with you but again very themed towards halloween so what do we have next now we have jacques latane latane um ah jack lantern um <laughs> I just kind of got that. Okay, born into a wealthy family in Marseille. Uh, Jock's father boasted his son was meant for great things. Uh, the young Jock uh, quickly made a name for himself with the local children. They often were hurt when they played with Jock, and local parents quickly saw a pattern emerging. emerging. Uh, Lantern relishes causing fear and terror in others. Already, already a statistic, sadistic psychopath, he came to the attention of Black Sun because of his unnatural abilities, for Lantern is a mesmer, able to compel others and control their actions actions through his thoughts alone. Uh, don't want this guy in your head, that's for sure. Allied forces gave him the code name Jack-O-Lantern uh, since the mask's eyepieces appear to glow with a strange witch light. Uh, Lanterns prefers to terrify and scare his enemies before killing them off. All right, uh, and he is listed as a nemesis NPC. Um, so uh, let's see, a stress, once again, another stress of 12. Um, 
his reason is probably his reason is his highest suit here that we see. Okay, let's take a look at um, his special rules. Uh, he is a fanatic. Uh, fanatics gain plus one to courage, included above, and gain plus uh, X morale, where X is the number of fanatics on their side. Okay. Uh, fear gas. The weaponized gas carried by Long Turn gives him the fearsome two special ability. Um, combined with the nameless uh, misspells, his fearful presence gains the area quality. Uh, f uh, feed upon fear. The NPC uh, rel uh, relishes the fear, fear of others, becoming bolder and more dangerous in the presence of panic. Whenever a character suffers a mental injury with, within medium range of the NPC, it generates two threats. Okay, a uh, nice little bonus then for the uh, uh, keepers, uh, the uh, game masters, when you're dealing with that. Uh, he is immune to fear. Uh, the mesmer Lathurn can mesmerize an opponent as a major action if you can speak to them directly using a mix of neuro-linguistic programming, uh, hypnotism, and his mental prowess. So um, not someone you want to be in a room with for any length of time, I would imagine. So uh, as a Black Sun uh, canon, Lathurn knows four spells from the spell book of Nyarlathotep and uses reason to cast spells. He will always care uh, carry the nameless misspell and others at the GM's discretion. All right, uh, fella has a real feel for causing terror. Ain't gonna lie. If I see him, I'll shoot him. Then shoot him twice again, just in case. Sergeant Brandon Carter, very good, uh, very good uh, uh, advice, I would say for that. Uh, but yeah, I think this is going to be another one of those uh, kind of tougher opponents, especially with that uh, mental ability that he has. Now we have a bar guest. Uh, that I got to admit, that is a kind of a terrifying creature. Uh, so let's take a look look at a little bit about that. Named by the allies after the legends of monstrous ghostly bears or hounds, this mutated creature was inspired or spawned by one of Oscar Richter's childhood nightmares. Scientists believe tales of something capable of scaring the Noctwolf leader as a child should be utterly terrifying to the enemies of the Noctwolf. Wolf. Yes. Uh, glowing with the flickers of the phosphorescence of uh, blonde or crystal, the creature resembles a nightmare. Bulging muscles uh, bulks out the creature's frame and uh, tubes pulse throughout the flesh and skeleton. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if the uh, if the picture there does uh, does this creature justice. Uh, the description sounds a lot more terrifying. Uh, the purpose of the bar guest is simple: hunt down and kill a specific individual. Uh, its senses are acute, and it's relentless, uh, relentless, relentless once it has been provided with a scent. Okay, uh, again, high agility, high brawn, um, stress of 14. Uh, so this is definitely a, a, the maybe the toughest character of the bunch that we have so far. Uh, as a toxic bite, hand-to-hand um, -hand combat, a six, six threat intense. Oh, uh, Hal, again, is a mental attack with a four stress uh, area attack. Uh, some of its special rules, we have Brutal 1, the creature makes and defends against melee attacks with brawn instead of agility. We have Fearsome 2, uh, we have Grasping, uh, we have Keen Senses. Uh, this one is based on hearing and scent, uh, so a natural kind of tracker. Uh, natural armor of two has night vi vision uh, is a relentless hunter so once it's, t it's targets uh, sent uh, the the Bagars is a relentless hunter and its pursuit can only end by the death of its victim or itself and then we do have that toxic bite whenever a target is affected by the persistent effect of any uh, bar gas toxic bite they immediately suffer a poison truth while this uh, truth remains the target will suffer persistent damage every single turn adding intense and piercing to effects removing the truth requires urgent medical attention Whew. okay um I hope there's not a sadistic game master out there who would kind of use them all at the same time, that's for sure. And speaking of sadistic game masters, we, of course, have our clown in the midst of this all as well. Uh, so this is known as the, the uh, Blood Harlequin Adek Winsniewski. Winsniewski. Um, so, inspired by the work of Joseph Grimaldi, Adek Windoweski was an unsuccessful Harlequin clown who found quicker ways to achieve fame or notoriety. While his Harlequin clown, clown act was nothing special, his illusionist skills and sleight of hand on stage were nothing short of miraculous. Uh, Amulet permitted him to bend reality in a small way, allowing him to successfully perform his illusions to fool the audience. Uh, Wiskineski had an appetite for murder, and the younger the victim, the better. Unfortunately for him, one teenage victim escaped and revealed the clown as a would-be murderer as a rage war surrounded around him and lynched the killer while still in the white face makeup of Harlequin costume, battering him to death, hanging his body from a butcher's hook. 
I'm getting Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger kind of vibes out of this particular character, which is perfectly fine. You got to draw from wherever, but that's kind of the thing that I'm kind of getting from here. Um, I really hate clowns. I know a lot of people very much can kind of fit with that. Uh, so let's see, another nemesis NPC. Uh, surprisingly for a clown, he's got quite a bit of brawn there with 11. Uh, Reason is a 7, Coordination is a 9, his stress is a 15. I think that's I think that beat out our killer uh, doggy up above us, didn't it? Uh, stress of 14, so yeah, I guess a... <laughs> A clown that a clown that dies and still lives? Yeah, makes sense. Um, he uses for his attacks a butcher's hook. He has a fearsome aura around him. His special is fast recovery. Uh, fearsome, feed upon fear, a bloody revenge. If Win uh, Winesquiz kills a victim, he tears off a diamond-shaped portion of their skin and it becomes a patch on his Harlequin costume. He gains plus one natural armor from each kill. Ooh, ooh. Oh, so if, if the players don't get to him quick enough, this guy could be uh, pretty deadly. Um, you cannot kill that which does not live. Uh, if defeated, uh, he cannot manifest for a year. The only way to truly destroy him is to destroy the bloodstone amulet completely if it can be found. Again, I think that's very much kind of reinforcing that kind of Freddy Krueger mentality. Love it. When you die in the dreams, uh, also haunts the dreamlands of Prague and stocks potential. If we weren't sure that this was a Freddy Krueger kind of placement, I think we are now at that point. Uh, so anyways, that's the Bloody Harlequin, Adek Winsniewski. And then uh, then the adventure seas that we have. So uh, we have, looks like to be about nine of them. Uh, we have the Curse. Uh, Section M gains possession of two of Senefeferu's canopic jars, the stomach and the liver from Black Sun Archaeological Site. All right, so definitely tying back up into that very first um, uh, monster that we had. Uh, we have Red Picket Fence. Something keeps attacking allied lines. It stalks and kills, leaving bloody corpses behind. Survivors uh, babbles about a massive phantom hound. Uh, the Bargest, all right? So again, uh, specifically going to one of the creatures that is referenced here, Fear Itself. Uh, Jacques Lantern plans uh, to mass produce his fear, uh, fear gas in a factory in France-German border in collaboration with Knockwell scientists. Uh, the Silent Village, not far from Knockwell's weapons research facility. Um, a small village uh, has fallen silent and the population disappeared as they are left large holes leading deep underground in a... Uh, it's a she head of massive dyed Ragor responsible. The agents must find out. Um, huh, I'm not sure which particular one. I mean, I guess I guess in that case it could be either the uh, um, the bar gas mentioned above, or it could be the the werewolves. Um, not quite sure about that one. Uh, the ritual. The agents learn that not all allied troops are hostile to the mythos. Some allied forces have joined a local cult of the NDC and have been carrying out their own rituals and sacrifices in the woods nearby. Okay, so I, I looks like they're having a couple of these, not necessarily directly related to the creatures the uh, that they have put in this uh, uh, October of Terror, which is I think is great. Uh, Trail of the Wolf, that's got to be definitely having some of that werewolf vibe to it. Uh, one of the Andreasen's werewolves falls in the hands of the Black Sun, um, causing some favors from the allies, and a group of agents are sent to help him. Oh, okay, so that's dealing directly with that um, kind of division between the uh, between the cast itself. Cool. Uh, Ghost Watch. Uh, the ghosts of old World War I German infantry battalion are rumored to haunt an old castle ruins as All Hallows' Eve approaches. Oh, oh which is a good old-fashioned ghost story. Operation Werewolf, a Nazi super soldier project, goes massively awry, creating a hideous hybrid wolf man. And then the bloody Harlequin. Of course, you have to have... <laughs> FM. You can't put you can't put a guy quite like that in there without having a, a, a seed specifically for him. Uh, and then ghost subs, the U950, the U950 of the uh, monsoon group assigned to Black Sun disappeared off the coast of Jakarta in 42. Now it's back and appears to be adrift in the Indian Ocean. <coughs> Okay, uh, interesting. So uh, we've got some adventure seeds that are directly tied to the uh, the creatures, the NPCs that are given to us in this adventure, um, as well as then some that aren't. So I think that's pretty nice uh, with this Halloween horrors. I think um, 
you know, I think there's a lot of good ones in here. Um, I think this Sekiferu Sek, is definitely a very uh, niche one. I think it's one that needs to kind of be set kind of in, in uh, kind of the North African uh, front of the war. Um, but maybe might be able to kind of go some other places. I just Something about it gives me that, uh, as I said before, that kind of mummy vibe that I do really like. Your classic werewolves, uh, kind of jack-o'-lantern. Um, and then the other one that I, you know, I gotta say... I think um, our good friend Adek here, the Heart Blood Harlequin, uh, would be another one. Uh, it'd be a lot of fun. I think it'd be very tough. I think these, uh, for someone like this, it's uh, probably going to be one of those one shots, maybe kind of a special Halloween thing um, that you don't necessarily expect your players uh, to kind of survive from. Uh, but anyway, that is the Halloween Horrors for Octum Cthulhu. Uh, their free version is available. It's kind of given out for the month of October, this Grim War of Terror. Uh, we'll definitely put a kind of a link to it so you can see what it is. It looks like a lot of fun. Uh, so if you have some ideas of what to kind of uh, to kind of flesh out more than just the uh, the seeds that they provide here, I think that'd be great. Uh, share and share alike, as we always like to say. So I will link a link to this. I believe it's both on Modifius's website as well as Drive Through RPG. Uh, so until next time.